Yo little broskies, how are you guys doing today? Now, for this video, I have another tech. It's not a new tech. It's something that the Yoshi community already knows, but not many players add into their repertoire of moves that they want to use against the opponent. And that particular move is which I call the baby windmill. The baby windmill can be done by pressing 1, plus 2, plus 3, which I did not do because I'm still terrible using the level list. There you go. You get that. That's uh, uh, what I consider to be called the baby windmill. Now the the big boy windmill is when you do this. That's the unblockable. But this one isn't an unblockable. This is a regular hit. Now you can also do this while you're in your no sword stance and you get the baby finger windmill. This one does damage, but the other one, this one, doesn't do any damage against the opponent. Now if you're close to the target and you do the version that you want, it only does zero damage and it's zero on block. But this one does a decent amount of damage to the opponent and it's still not an unblockable, it's still a normal hit. Now the reason why I am explaining this is that this move, the one that you want to be using for this video, is this move. Now on counter hit, the move is plus 16 if you use it against the opponent before they use an attack or when you get the counter hit in general you get plus 16 no matter what now if they try to move in against you and attempt to attack and you're in the middle of using this particular move which i'm failing to do using that move while they're moving into attack you can get about plus 16 to plus 17 and above it can go about i believe plus 28 to plus 29 it really depends on the amount of time that the baby windmill has been used or should i say how long it's been lingering in the animation or to the end of the animation it will grant you more frame advantage against the opponent when they attack so as an example let's say if they were to use this particular move the kazia this is plus 16 but if i move away it's plus 18 but it can get more to that. Depending on the move that they use, it could either be around plus 20 and more. But because I have the Kazuya doing the down forward 3, 2 into 1 plus 2, the patricide fist, I'm managing to only really get plus 16 to plus 17 to plus 18 on the opponent. But trust me when I say this that you can get more than that, depending on exactly when they attack you in the middle of the animation. Now, so if you use this wall on counter hit and you get plus 16, you can't get a down forward 2, you can't really attempt that, and but you can't still get a back 2-2, two two, the heat engager. You can get that, or you can get yourself a down forward 1 into 4, or down forward 1 into 2. But if it's not a counter hit, you won't really get the 2, it will actually just be a on block move instead. But if you do it this close, you can actually land a down forward 2. So you can land the down forward too, only if they're the ones attacking you. If you use it as an offensive move and try to get close to the opponent and land the 1 plus 2 plus 3, and you get plus 16 if they try to press any buttons, then chances are you won't manage to land a down forward too. But only when they get close to you, because this move is more of a defensive move. You're using this to stop them from getting too close. If you use it at the right time and you get plus 16, you can still go for your down forward 2 and go for a combo. But if you end up getting yourself, let's say, more frames, and you know that you managed to use the move at the right particular time, you can get yourself a CD1 against the opponent for a big launch. I messed the combo up, but I got exactly the, the information that I want you guys to see. I, right there, I actually managed to get plus 25 on frame advantage because I did it at the very earliest and then they hit at the latest on the animation and I got myself a plus 25, which is good. But if you want to do it and then let's say in the middle of it, you can get nearly about plus 17 to plus 18 consistently. If you use it not at the beginning animations of this move, but right in the middle of it, you can grant yourself plus 17 and 18 to then land your CD1 against the opponent for free. So I can see you can just do that and get yourself counter hit combos from doing that. But again, only use it when you're defending against the opponent. Don't use it as a type of, oh, I want to try and catch him off guard with this move. Same thing 
with your finger windmill. Use this as a defensive move. Do not try to use this as his. Oh, I want to get close and then use this. Because for one, the frame advantage is fine, but the startup frames of the move is too slow. So you're taking a big risk to use this move on front of them when they can just launch you or try to counter hit uh, launch you with a move. Also, if the opponent decides to go and move in and try to step you, you can get some frame advantage from the move as well, even if they don't attempt to attack you. But depending on which side they're trying to step you from, you will either get zero frames on advantage or more, depending. So to Yoshimitsu's left side, if they step to that side, you only get zero. But if you do it to the right side of Yoshimitsu, you can get plus three, which is weird. I don't know why that is. I'm guessing it really depends on the angle and position. That since you're in player one side, you get plus three. So it might be different if you're playing on the right side, on player two side. But I haven't really tested it out uh, enough to really see whether or not that's the case. But I doubt it will change. But it's a different case if you're trying to land yourself a counter hit against the opponent if they try to, let's say, do something while sidestepping against you. As you can see, you get plus 19 if they're moving to that side, to the right side for Yoshimitsu. But you only get plus 16 if it's towards your left side instead. So you can also still use it against the opponent if they attempt to sidestep you and they attempt to attack you at the same time. You can get about plus 16 or more if they're stepping to your right side. But this also largely depends on the move that they use or how long you're lingering the animation of your baby windmill against the opponent that maybe you may even get more frames depending on that as well. So that's about it. The, the video is short. It's just meant to be showcasing exactly what you can do with the move itself. The move, again, is more for defensive purposes. You're not using it to try to engage the opponent up close for more of a neutral move to see whether or not they're going to immediately engage you and try to interact you with one of their moves. I will probably use the levelless a bit more often now. I did say on the post that I wasn't going to use it, but because I don't have a controller right now and I just want to make some content for the channel, at least something, so that you guys can be entertained or whatever, right? And just so that I can also get better with the levelless. But I still prefer playing on a gamepad overall. Even if I do end up mastering the levelless, I still prefer to play on the gamepad overall. It's just that it's something that I've been playing on for years. So moving on to a different particular type of controller is just very awkward for me. But besides that, it is fun to use, but it is still a headache to get around, at least when you're playing ranked. In fact, I have demoted a couple of times with Yoshi Mitsu as is, getting from Tekken Emperor, and now I'm at Kishin, just, be just because I am trying to learn how to use the levelers because the other controller was broke already. So besides that, I hope you guys, again, stay safe and stay tuned for more content.